From the heathens, got will, got fight, got pride, got reason. If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gon' feed them. If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon. I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing. Take me. Hello, and welcome back to the Bobby Dizzle Podcast, everybody. This week's episode is dealing with the aliens and demon connections, and are they affiliated? Are they the same thing? This week's guest is Corey Pressler. He is a experiencer of the ufo and demon phenomenon at a very young age and is also a ufo experiencer has a pretty good sighting story to tell but before we get started let me remind everyone to check out bobbydizzle.com it should be on the screen right now somewhere i don't know where i'm gonna put it on there add it in post we'll do it live we'll do it live but bobbydizzle.com has all the ways to listen follow remind everyone to subscribe to the youtube channel and please share this I'm trying to get a thousand followers, make this kind of a viable channel. Right now we're chilling at about 150 and I want to get I want to get higher. Those are rookie numbers. Rookie numbers, baby. I want to pump those numbers up. But please share, please share and uh, with all your friends. And I am on audio platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Anchor. If you go to Anchor, which is in on my podcast, it is or on the website. On the, it's on the podcast too. It's on the website, and you'll find the ways that all the ways to listen on Anchor. Which features all the different, like, um, it's like iHeartRadio, that kind of stuff. But whatever the case, you get the idea. Check out BobbyDizzle.com. All the ways to like, listen, subscribe, follow. Make fun of yours truly on there. So, let's get started. Here comes Corey Pressler. This was a fun episode to make. I made it a few weeks ago, and I've been excited. I've been asked by several people when I was going to air it. And the day is the day. So, here's Corey Pressler. Thanks, everybody. the video playing in two places in my ear how's it going Corey pressler hey how we doing yeah hey, uh, how's it going hello and welcome back to the bobby dizzle podcast everybody we're live to tape tonight me and Corey are live you are not you're on tape or digital media uh this podcast is your home for rabbit holes tangents and any topic that captivates my net like attention span i do have a couple of announcements tonight i've been reconstructing my website since nearly freespeech.net wiped it off the face of the earth it was my pride and joy, but my old website is no more. But you can check that out still at bobbydizzle.com. You can also find all the ways to watch, listen, follow me on social media on bobbydizzle.com and, of course, in the description. Uh, we may have an appearance from our favorite biologist, Wild Trees, tonight. He is very in demand, so we, we may not come in. But we do have Corey Pressler, who's our main guest. Wild Trees is just the... Uh, He's the color commentate and ask all the all the good questions. It's just me and my immature jokes tonight, so I have to deal with it. And Corey Pressler, um, how's it going? How you doing? I'm doing really good. Up up in Indiana, freezing cold. He said it's 100 degrees here in Alabama. <laughs> yeah, but it's pretty, it's pretty cold. <laughs> oh yeah, Mr. Pressler um, is a UFO and time loss experiencer. And tell me if I'm leaving things out or getting things wrong here, because I'm just going back creating this from our uh, previous conversations. And is passionate about researching the correlation between abduction, sleep paralysis, attack, and attack in the demonic realm. Uh, he also shares his testimony on several shows. And I know you've sh- shared them a lot. I don't know if you want to share it tonight or you want to go down another road, another conversation. Uh, we can, you shared? Yeah, we can. I could share the testimony. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear it, but I just don't want to be that guy. It's like, oh, tell me the same thing you've said a thousand times again. Right, right. But, but yeah, if you want um, to, if you want to, the floor is yours for that. Yeah, one. Um, yeah. There's a there's a big connection between. It seems uh, generational, like what the parents can do can affect the children growing up. Um, I don't necessarily think that was my uh, case. I think mine was uh, sexual abuse. I had sexual abuse when I was real young, and it caused me to have uh, out of body experiences. And but I didn't re I didn't have it like uh, immediate memories of it. I blocked it out, and I had recall later on down the road. And it's like having the event all over again once you have the recall. 
And it seemed like after that, I was having demonic attack. Um, it didn't seem like demonic attack at the time. It just seemed like I was just having out-of-body experiences. They seemed like dreams. They seemed like really realistic dreams. But looking back, I was looking down at myself while events were happening. I can just remember just vivid detail of the events. Um, then I ended up getting meningitis, and it was like after that, I didn't have any more out-of-body experiences. Hmm. And then fast forward, I don't know, I was probably 22, 23. And then I had uh, sleep paralysis was starting to affect me. I had moved into a new apartment with a girl that I was dating at the time. And it was our first night in the house. And I had woke up. Couldn't, I couldn't move. My girlfriend was awake for some reason, but I, she noticed that I was struggling and it was like three thirty, four in the morning. Um, she said that she tried to lift me up. She couldn't like I was a thousand pounds. And, but we both heard this thing giggling. It started laughing at us. Like the more we struggled, the more this thing was laughing at us. But we talked about it a little bit afterwards, but after that, she just wanted to act like it didn't happen. And then uh, right after that, I was working at a, a dairy facility, a dairy factory, and um, these two events were real close together to the sleep paralysis and mm -hmm. that uh, I don't know if it was a succubus, incubus, what type of entity it was, but it seemed to enjoy the fact that I was in a lot of discomfort, <laughs> oh, yeah. but uh, yeah, I was working at this factory and um, let's see, there was a side door. I wasn't in the cooler section. This, what I did was we had these bossies, they were called bossies and they were eight stacks. You could put 10 gallons on each stack. So a rack. And so you'd get what, like 80, 80 gallons on each one, but they would come back in a row and they would you know, had spilled milk on them. I had to pull them out and put them through a sterilizer. Well, I would take a break off to the side door. I went out there and I was smoking a cigarette and my boss was standing there just staring up into the sky. And I was trying to talk to him, but he wasn't paying attention. I look up and there's four lights making like a, a small triangle shape. Well, eventually they just, it almost looked like it was coming into either coming into our dimension or mm. I just couldn't see what was coming into view, I guess, because the lights just started appearing out of nowhere. Cause we thought they were separate craft at first. And then eventually it, this thing was like the size of three, four football fields. It looked just like the Phoenix lights back in 97. Mm, yeah. The, Telltale sign. Yes. But the only difference was instead of a, a complete triangle where the bottom would be a straight line, it was curved. It had a curve to it and mm -hmm. it didn't make any sound. It didn't. Uh, the, the only thing that I noticed was there was a smell of ozone, like an electric storm, but there was no sound, no, uh, no wind disturbance. It was real quiet. And then it just kind of hovered there. And then drifted off to a set of trees off to the left that we couldn't see it. It just disappeared behind these trees. But what was really weird was I don't remember the rest of that night. And that was only like two, two hours into my eight hour shift. So there's six hours of work that I don't remember. And then I don't remember going home and talking to my girlfriend about it or anything. I don't remember. I just... The next day when I got to work, I was all amped, ready to talk to my coworkers because I wanted to report it. I was like, let's, you know, see if anybody else saw this thing. Cause I mean, it was massive. It was, mm -hmm. this thing was tree. I could have underhand thrown a rock and smacked this thing. It was so close. It was insane. And you had they said that the rest of them had the same thing, didn't you? And your boss? There was the, well, see, I had my boss. I, I mm -hmm. forgot to say, yeah, there was like uh, 
altogether, five people came out and was standing there, and I knew every one of them. But one of them was a really good friend, and but he knew the other people like he knew me, like how close we were, but I didn't know those people. And I was going up to them, asking them, and they were like, I don't know what you're talking about. They, they just blew me off, and I thought they were messing with me. And I was talking to my friend that I was – kind of close to and he's like i don't know what you're saying man i don't he's like what ship what what are you talking about hmm. and i it just blew my mind that i don't know if they just were so freaked out that they just didn't want to go there again or if they just truly didn't remember and i'm the only one that has a memory of it yeah, you could have been just yeah. sensitive enough to uh have the the wherewithal to remember it since you had the experiences before yeah. Or it didn't take like whatever they do to make people not remember. It mm -hmm. just didn't take good enough for me. It, it did, but it didn't, so to speak. Like but you say you didn't. smelled ozone. Did you have any, did you have any heat off of it? No, I don't oh, remember. No I don't remember uh, like a temperature change, but I do remember my hair standing up on end. I've been in an electric storm before and that's what it reminded me of. Like it's right before lightning yeah. strikes. It doesn't surprise yeah. me that maybe you would, if something like that did happen and something was coming through, you know, what we call, we call the veil on this show kind of. Yeah. The, yeah. The line it, that ozone would be something you smell. Yeah. We called That's it pier definitely. piercing, piercing the cosmic veil when mm -hmm. I worked with uh, Joe Jordan. Okay. That's what me and, uh, me and wild trees are just saying like, what are we going to call this? Cause you got, all these entities that come in and out, like it's just, that's the veil. That's, it's also yeah. what I call, it's also what I call believing and not believing is if you want to go put your toe into the veil. Yeah. But yeah, hat, Joe. Hat and t-shirt that is. Yeah. He likes to call it the, the cosmic mm -hmm. veil. Who, who yeah. was that? Who's that you Which, said it was? Uh, piercing the cosmic veil. Or Joe, uh, Joe who? Joe Jordan from okay. CE, CE4 research. He's, okay. Actually, that's what brought me back to, to Christ because, I mean, my mom was from Kentucky, so she raised me Baptist. And so I'd, I'd known Jesus my whole life. But uh, okay. when I was researching the ancient alien theory and I come across uh, Gan Shamira's Age of Deceit, I'm sure you've probably seen some of those. But Joe Jordan was in that and his website popped up and I got on there and was, I seen all these uh, testimony of abductions, people that had in the middle of an abduction cried out to Jesus and it ended immediately. And so that it just, it triggered something in me that I just knew there's, there's no doubt in my mind from the experiences that I had. And plus even after that, I've had other experiences where it seemed like I was on the verge of uh, sleep paralysis and I could see a shape forming above me like something was about to happen and I would cry out to Jesus and it, it would just end it immediately. But yeah, the testimony, mm -hmm. the hundreds and hundreds of testimony, it's like, why would they, why would an alien and these people are totally full on believing that they're on an alien craft. And these mm -hmm. are little gray aliens probing them, doing whatever, taking blood, taking fluids. And uh, somewhere in during the attack, they have enough peace of mind to call out to Jesus. And if it, they, the, they said that the entities will scream out in abject terror or like it's it's hurting them. Mm -hmm. Then you've then you've got a psychiatrist like uh, Jerry Marzinski. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. If you haven't looked him up, he's somebody to look up. Mm -hmm. He's he's a a retired psychiatrist now, but he still investigates and I think he still here. he still works with uh, patients. I think um, severe cases possibly, um, but he's the only one. I apparently. They don't teach you when you're talking with a psych or a, a schizophrenic. They don't teach you to pay attention to what the voices are telling them. And he went against the grain and said, well, he asked them to tell him 
what's the voice is telling you? And he started journal, you know, documenting them, writing a journal on everything they were saying. And they uh, basically proved to him that this isn't just in these people's heads through different people. They, you just have to see it to understand. But yeah, he's, he's made some, some groundbreaking discoveries for, for the psycho or the, uh, he, well, he went against the pharmaceutical Mm -hmm. company and that's, you you would think you, well, you would think they would give him like an award because he actually did heal people but he did it without the pharmaceuticals and he did it through <laughs> like a spiritual way and they were ready to fire him for it. <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed <laughs> yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So he went against the grain and did exactly what he did the opposite basically of everything that he was trained and look where it got him. That sort of reminds you of the, uh, the COVID scandal with yeah. anybody, anybody who had anything that wasn't, when I hard pure vax, you didn't get it. Even I made a video because I I had been doing a re- an exercise regimen and taking a set of um, vitamins that had been recommended by a doctor. And I had COVID. I didn't even know it. And I thought I was in bad health. I mean, maybe I'm not. I'm not old, old. I'm not in terrible shape. But when I posted that, I thought I was going to get shit canned. But nobody, nobody did anything about it. I kind of just said this is what happened. Right. But like in, anybody bigger, like you seen Joe Rogan and talked about his treating it they just crucified him i'm like he didn't really say anything wrong he just said what he did yeah and it probably went against vaccinated yeah he just well they said don't take ivervectin Mm -hmm. and people were taking ivervectin and it's working and then you (laughs) my my great aunt did she went to the co-op and got it yeah and then you got that nurse in uh germany that was given saline solution instead of the the jab juice mm. and they tried her the judge found her not guilty and she probably saved a bunch of lives i'm sort of on the fence about i am i don't want you to think i'm either way or yeah. i am vaccinated i just went ahead and got it because i'm federal and sort of a federal employee so i had to get it well these were elderly people I think. oh yeah and I well, that think, was dangerous yeah some people can take it but I think that when I think if you were at high risk, you're a, you should have taken it instead of worrying about the effects of it. Yeah, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. In that case, yeah, not anti-vax at all. I just think it was. I think it could have been handled a little better. Right. It went to yeah, I, I should have. Well, I should have uh, clarified that it was elderly too. When, yeah, and it went from was, zero to Salem witch trial really quick. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> like a, totally. like it saw a state trooper. Yeah. So um, I wanted to add something I had in my mind um, when you were saying the folks who were on the ship calling out, calling out to Jesus. So it was people actively being abducted that they did that to. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was and skimming our was, conversation. Yeah. Some wondering. of them, some of them were uh, as children all the way into adulthood. A lot of them get reverse or uh, regressive hypnosis and mm-hmm. they'll, they'll find out more details and sometimes uh they can start getting spiritually attacked during the hypnosis like it activates whatever it is the connection that they've Mm -hmm. made and it's usually uh spiritualism that's usually what brings it on if you start messing with like ouija boards or uh yeah you just invite it in and once and once you stop all that you stop the attention uh yeah it and the the relationship with jesus is another thing it just ends Mm -hmm. it completely people will go from just nightmare to nothing and like seconds flat it is pretty amazing some do struggle Mm -hmm. but yeah i've been there and i just i'd like to help others that's that's going through the same Sorry, somebody knocked on my door. Yeah, it's interesting to hear this this side of the um, this side of the abduction testimony because I've heard the other the other side from people who didn't have a bad experience, but they also had sort of like the same. What am I trying to say? The same um, report about people who did have a hard time with it, like it was because it's trauma. If it's 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 sheer terror. If it's not a 
not handled correctly with the with the memory, the time loss we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. And I've heard the, the those guys saying that if you know they've had they've what am I trying to say? They didn't talk to them. They they got testimony from them saying that they demand to be put back and they put them back. So I can see that if if you get up into whatever whatever's happening to you, if you if you start to demand that kind of um, intervention and how they would automatically just snap you back into where you came from, especially if it was that powerful of a, that powerful of a reference. If you went straight to, went straight to the nuclear option on them. Yeah. Demonic or not, even if they're not demonic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it just, I think they want you to be in that state of helplessness Mm -hmm. and that's why they, uh, they get you when you're sleeping. Yeah. Do, do you they're, think they're aliens at all or just are straight up demon, demons? No, actually I'm uh I'm for the geocentric. I'm I'm not for the heliocentric design. I believe there's a firmament. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That was gonna be one of my top one of our topics we were going to. Yeah. I love that topic. Uh, I've been on yeah. Antarctica kick all week. Yeah, that's the craziest. I mean Gearing up, they, man. They got they got everybody signed up. Nobody going there. Got every every country signed up for the treaty, the peace treaty. It's the only piece of real estate that every single country signed up on it. I think even North Korea mm-hmm. is signed up on it. So first it was twelve, yeah. sixty one, something like that. It's pretty fascinating. We had a. Have you ever heard of Dolly Saffron? She's an abductee. Preston Dennett. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I've had them on here. I have the I have those shows I need to launch. She's going to be on here in January, but I have okay. to have Preston. That's her uh, her uh, researcher that took down all her notes and did all her studies with her. Okay. But he was talking about she was talking about how the, the Antarctica has a um, AI in it that's just out of control down there. It's like a giant. It's, it's being treated like a giant server room. It's it's hard telling. Yeah, there's no, there's no they, telling. The the military they love building dumbs, the deep underground military bases, and you look at the uh, caving systems, and I'm sure you've heard of the four one one David Pilates. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, you take all those missing reports and dot them on a map, and then do the same with the caving system and lay it over, and it's just they line right up. You do the so, same thing with uh, Bigfoot sightings too. Right. They fit and, right on top of that. Yes. And then it's you incredible. got all these people looking up when they should be looking down. It's probably why they disappear so quick. Because you'll have people mm-hmm. talking to somebody behind them for turn their head for two seconds, just long enough for nobody to look at them. There's no human mm-hmm. attention on this person. And then they look back and they're gone. There's no sound. There's no struggle just gone i've watched the hunted 411 i can't watch the other one because there's kids involved yeah it's... it started showing that i'm like i'm not i'm not done i'll do the hunted one because i'm a hunter and i can handle that but yeah when, when little timmy with his teddy bear walked off i was done yeah. <laughs> i just can't it's... i couldn't do that one then you, you got would... that that kid with the uh he come back saying they they actually found him he went missing and then they found him like in a trance sitting up against mm-hmm. a tree and they got him. They didn't. He didn't talk for like days, I think. Mm-hmm. And then when he finally started talking, he said it was a bear man. Yeah, yeah. The bear. The bears took care and, of him. And he took him underground. And they. That's how they traveled from one spot to the next. And they pop up every once in a while. And he had put him into a trance, and told him to wait there while he went to go do something. And they found him while that bear man was off doing whatever. And he probably came back and was like, oh, no, my trance, <laughs> my trance wore off. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's kind of a yeah. telltale sign there. Call it yeah, card. That, yeah. Well, you've got you've got animal camps and then you've got the spiritual camp. You know, you've got like I'm sure you've heard of Bobo from the <laughs> Bigfoot Hunter oh, yeah. show. Yeah. He used to actually be a roadie for Black Flag, I guess. But uh, he used to be the animal camp, but then he had an experience 
where it either it was an orb and it turned into Bigfoot or it was mm. Bigfoot turned into an orb. And then he had a UFO incident, I think, also possibly. Don't quote me on that. But I know he did have some type of a an experience to where he's like, whoa. Yeah, know, I haven't heard about that part, about Bobo getting uh, flipped over there because he was always flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah. I That's find that I the thought. hardest thing to believe is the flesh and blood argument. Yeah. <laughs> because I mean, either they're not real or they're they're interdimensional. Yeah. To well, and the thing term. that ties them all together is uh, high strangeness. Okay. Mm-hmm. You've got ghost hunters, you've got UFO hunters, and you've got Bigfoot hunters. And they all, once they go out, eventually they're going to end up experiencing high strangeness to where they'll go home and they're going to have its poltergeist activity. And that's what that's as me being a follower of Jesus. I see that is it's the demonic all, you know, it's now just the shape shifting mm-hmm. abilities that these fallen angels have that they're, that's their created ability. So it's high strangeness. Is that, is that, is that what it means? I've heard uh, that a lot it, lately, but I haven't been able to find like the definition to it. Like I know, you think high strangers, you know about what it means. I've just never got like a solid definition. It's it's uh, a ghost hunter would just call it what it is, poltergeist mm-hmm. activity. But that's what a Bigfoot hunter would call it. And that's what a UFO experiencer, because they're experiencing things that are with the oh, yeah. UFO and alien aspect. But now they've got this ghost aspect. It makes sense for the the ghost hunter. They're like expecting it almost, you know, but to a Bigfoot hunter, it's high strangeness. That's like, that's highly strange that this is happening because I'm out hunting an animal, but now stuff's moving around in my house. Like it's a poltergeist activity. So they just, they've coined it. crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it ties it all together. My last guest wrote a book called high strangeness. Ah, Wow. And he's it's high strangeness, the uh, Minnesota Bigfoot book. And I yes. interviewed the guy. I interviewed the guy he wrote it about. I interviewed the author of it. And I'm almost to the point of buying a new car and driving to Minnesota to see this shit. Yeah, it is insane. And yeah. Travis Taylor used high strangeness on Skinwalker Ranch. I'm like, what is this term? I was getting ready to come to that. That's amazing mm-hmm. you brought that up because that's what ties it all together mm-hmm. for what I believe is it's just demonic deception because. I'm, if you test any one of these, if any one of these entities came to you and you called out to the name of Jesus, I would almost guarantee that you would see its true colors. Because there's people that have had uh, a Bigfoot attack to where they had to call out to Jesus. And it, I mean, and I'm sure it's happened with tons of uh, uh, ghost hunting paranormal hunting people that have cried out just out of sheer fright and they don't even realize it. You almost have to. It's like the go-to defense mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you wonder, like I'm not trying to, I'm, I try not to be blasphemous with my hypotheses on this area because I know we're sort of allowed to think certain ways and oh, I, don't, I don't want to commit sacrileges or anything, but it makes you wonder what kind of rank there is in the spiritual world. Like what, like where everything falls in line over there. Cause you know, yeah, you know, they're, they're aware like angels and the old ETs and the old and the demons, which are evil spirits. Like how does, how does it all like they know Jesus is coming? Like, Oh crap. We summon the big one. Yeah. They, I think that there are some that you, unless you're already walking with Jesus, if you come in contact with them, if you, if you're walking a, a life of a heathen, just mm-hmm. calling out to Jesus probably isn't going to even work because they're so powerful. You would have to literally have the Holy Spirit with you to even affect it. Yeah, you have to have a working knowledge at least. Yeah, there are there are cases of people that have cried out during uh, a alien abduction and it didn't work. But there are also organizations within within the government. Is it called? Oh, what is it? It is. <laughs> now I can't think of it. Oh, oh, 
my lab. Oh, my lab. The my lab organization where they they act like they're aliens mm -hmm. and they'll mm -hmm. literally yeah. abduct people while they're sleeping and try to get like uh, recon. They're trying to get information because in their in it's the people they're grabbing are the ones that are actually being abducted. Mm -hmm. They know they're being abducted, so they you think that actually in. happens to my lab, the mill lab. I, I do believe so. That's um, insane because that's that's some government power that's a, beyond our comprehension. I, I think they allowed it. it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that Gri the, uh, what's it called the Griotta Treaty. One of the presidents, I, uh, Eisenhower, I think, mm -hmm. signed a uh, supposedly. They said it was aliens, but I would say it was demonic. And they allowed so many humans that they could abduct and do whatever they wanted with and. They uh, basically just went beyond the contract and just disregarded it and went past that quota that they gave them. And Who's going to stop them? Yeah. I mean, they're spiritual. What are you going to do? They're just going to disappear and go do it anyways. <laughs> so that's what they're trying. They're just trying to uh, at least stay on top of what they're doing and where they're going because – there's a lot of Luciferians in the military. A lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, it's perfect. I mean, you get paid to kill. I mean, possibly. If you go to war, <laughs> if, if you're a Luciferian anyways, you're into sacrificial this, that, or the other. So that's just basically a sacrifice for them. So Have you, have you ever heard the... Um story about the demon that knew what, what person in the group wasn't baptized. I can't remember where I heard that story at, but I was thinking when you said that if you didn't have it, if you weren't, um, weren't walking with the Holy spirit, that it wouldn't be doing any good. And I wonder since I am baptized and everything, like if that would be some kind of notch on my belt. Yeah, that you know? that's, that's, it's like a spiritual mark. They can definitely tell. Yeah, it was, sure. I think I might've been listening. There's this new show on YouTube where they interview, like they do like a Q and a series with an exorcist, like an actual Catholic diocese exorcist. And uh, he was talking about how the demon pointed at a firefighter and said, you're not baptized. I'd have to, I'd have to get the hell out of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and plus you got uh, uh, people, you'll have like five people standing there. Three of them can see a craft up in the sky and two can't. I mean, there's tons of these episodes mm -hmm. that's have, I've heard of them. And that's just the ones that couldn't see it are the ones that are saved or have been baptized or, you know, and the ones that aren't, that's why they're seeing it. Then you've got countless stories of the Native Americans. They're like, mm -hmm. it's not a good thing to see Bigfoot. They're like, when you see Bigfoot, something bad is going to happen in your life. And that, to me, is another that points towards it being demonic, some type of a, like you were saying, a rank. Yeah. And it's, and it's funny because I think that the same thing that's abducting people, is the same thing that's grabbing people at the 411. But why is it they can keep them when they grab them in the wilderness, but they have to return them when they grab them from their home. It's like a rogue if bunch that, doing it. Yeah. It's not, or, not the same group. So, well, I mean, it might it might be the same entities, mm -hmm. but just like you were saying, different classification, different area. I just call Element, it spirit, like like spiritual red tape is what I like to call mm -hmm. it. Like a, a vampire, you have to you have to accept it into your house. Oh yeah, like uh, just anybody like. You've heard a million stories of somebody that messed with the Ouija board. Now suddenly their house is just full of all this craziness that that wasn't there before. Is that's the acceptance? I have a coworker kind of kind of was in that situation a few years ago. Her yeah. mother was like a, her mother would exercise places, and they were at a place in Kentucky called Doe Run Inn. And I think it hit the it hit the fan, and they had to get out of there. The mother stayed to kind of take care of the demon, and she went back to her her room to get her clothes and get, and just kind of bug out. Saw an old man in a chair. It disappeared before her eyes. Oh. I, 
I don't, I, that's creepy. But she said, like, I, I see her every day. She was talking about how the shadow people, shadow people followed her around for weeks after that. Yeah. She said and they were everywhere. I, I think what that is, 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 is if, if it's not a level, that's either a ranking of demonic or that's the level of uh, how close they've gotten to you. Like they can take different shapes and forms depending on how I call it the spiritual doorway. Like mm -hmm. if, if you use a Ouija board every night for a week, say that doorway is going to be just ripped off its hinges eventually. Or if you're uh, channeling, I don't know if you know what channeling is or auto writing or things like that. The psychic mediums like to do where they'll, they'll allow a spirit to take them over and they'll, it's not them writing. It's the spirit has taken them over. Like, uh, have you ever heard of H.P. Blavatsky? From uh, she mm. started the Theosophical Society. I haven't. I was I was trying to think of a channeling. I've um, never heard of that going on. She channeled the book that she's famous for. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it now. I can't think. But that whole book was channeled, just like Aleister Crowley channeled the Book of the Law. That was completely channeled through. Uh, what was it? Iwas, I think, was the the mm -hmm. his ascended master, god, deity, or whatever that was. But yeah, there's certain books out there that these people claim, you know, it was a demon that came through them, and or a spirit, or they whatever. Just they were. for them with their hands. Yes, they just mm -hmm. they take them out. It's a form of possession. But the more you do that, the more it just rips that door off its hinges to the point where they won't need permission eventually. And when it's like that, that's usually when the attacks happen. Um, what do you think the Ouija board does? Because I've heard you can make your own Ouija board. Yeah. It's and just it a, exactly the same as the one you get from uh, Parker brothers. Yeah. It's, I could make one right here right now with this pen and piece of paper. Yes or no. Just like that. Charlie, Charlie. It's, it's a simple, yeah. it's as simple as that. It's all intention. And your will, will and intention, and where your attention is pointed, you're giving them direct attention. You're calling out to them, and that's that's what they want. It's it's a it's a form of worship, almost. Mm -hmm. It's just it's so weird because it, it just and it like amplifies how everything is kind of just waiting on that outlet, waiting for the lowest uh, path of least resistance. Don't, yes. don't care what it is. Yes. Like this dude over here wants us to talk to a talk to his dead grandmother. So let's get Beelzebub on the case and put on a wig, get down there and talk to him. Yep. Yeah. It's just another one to look up is uh, Roger Morneau. He's a he was a uh, part of an elite Luciferian group in Canada back in the forties, and he they let him in on a lot of the stuff that was going to happen and everything that he's talked about in this testimony that he gives that was 20 some years ago, probably 30 years now mm -hmm. is happening. And he talks about alien invasion. That's all demonic deception that they're doing, how evolution was deception. And, oh man, there's just this whole list of things that, it, that he goes through that, just lines exactly up with what's happening now. He's he's passed away now, but oh, okay. yeah, but he was uh, in direct. He said he went into a room, and there was all these typewriters that were going, but the, instead of just going to one side, and they were going by themselves. But instead of going to one side, they would type forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, and it was for a uh, a lawyer that was a part of the 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 coven. Luciferian coven and they were writing something for all these different cases that he was working on. And, and it was just spirits. He said they were familiar spirits. They said the magicians like uh, Chris angel, for instance, mm -hmm. people like that, they're doing all these tricks that are just, there's no way that they're, they're faking this stuff. Some of it, some of it is illusion. Don't get me wrong, but a lot of it is like, what is going on? Or, uh, What's the other one? Dynamo, the guy from uh, the UK. Mm -hmm. He has this trick where, and I've seen other ones do it, but it's just, I don't, 
I just don't get it. <laughs> He's pulling that rope all the way through him. And there's just no way. I, I yeah, mean, that, that stuff. It, some of the Chris Angel stuff is like, what What exactly are you doing? Yes. Like, like no uh, way. the colored handkerchiefs where they're inside of a glass and they're just bouncing around the little, he's got like a, a weight tied around a handkerchief and he's making them just shoot all over the room. Like they got a life of their own. There's another one that does the same thing, but they're on fire. The handkerchiefs are on fire and they're just going all over the, the room that he's in. It's just like, there's no string. And if there was, how is it on there? Because it's on fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, there's there's some stuff you see like there's no way he figured that out like how how yeah. did that person's card get in a block of ice that they picked yes I don't, I don't or know. were they pushing cell phones into a aquarium and then he takes his hand and puts a uh, newspaper over it and then sticks his hand through the aquarium and grabs the phone and pulls it back out or pulls a uh, he'll take a handkerchief that dynamo and he'll pull it right through the center of a phone. Mm -hmm. While the camera's on, the phone going, it's it's insane. Yeah, some of it. David Blaine's another one. Yeah, I think they're, and plus, when you see their their uh, advertisement, they always got little devils on their shoulders whispering in their mm -hmm. ears, and it's always really dark and demonic. Like Plus, they're, they they're, all play in Las Vegas, which is hell on earth. Yeah, <laughs> Sin, Sin City. Yeah, that, that's definitely the place. Have you, what's the, what's the, um, do you have any good Ouija board stories from eyewitnesses that tried it? Like what has happened to them? Uh, like they, no, no, but I've, I've seen quite a bit of stuff, quite a few videos to where people, mm -hmm. you could tell something wasn't right. I know, uh, there's, all there's paranormal a normal activity. It scared me. Well, there's a guy called uh, mellow bird that's in the UK. <laughs> Just look up Mellow Bird, mm -hmm. and he's got a bunch of, I don't know if he's still active, but he was filming all this stuff going on while he was getting on his Ouija board, and because of the Ouija board activity that he was doing, it caused all this stuff to happen, and he was getting just, he would use a shot glass, and that shot yeah. glass would literally explode right there off the board. It would. He was doing it on like Halloween night, and making like special events for it but uh yeah it can get dangerous and then when there's those cases that i think it was in africa where like a whole school this private school it was like a catholic school i think it was a girl school but all the girl students got possessed or a, a big portion of them were considered possessed they had to call in like psychiatric care and doctors and because they were messing with Ouija boards. There's so many things that happen in the schools in Africa. Yeah. Like well, every, every, every genre of paranormal has the school in Africa store. Yeah. It's crazy. I guess and, it's uh, going monitor. And that UFO. Yeah. That's what I, that's what Back, one I was thinking of. Yeah. The John Mack interview where he goes in and interviews all the kids right after it happened. Yeah. We always wondered what the purpose of that was. Like why, why did he deliver the message he did there if it was broke down or was he broken down and he just had, he had something he had to show kind of like when you meet a vegan, they're going to tell you they're vegan no matter what's going on. Yeah. Maybe, that, maybe that's just like his spiel. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's like a show and tell almost. It feels mm -hmm. like to me, like they're wanting all this to come out because you got the military and the news and the CIA out they're running everything on media oh yeah they, they said that okay. like uh what is that project project mockingbird they said they ended that years ago but it's probably never ended that's so something else now yeah so, <laughs> it's a whole other branch of the government now yeah i i just i don't know i, I feel like they're they were making fun of everybody before, but now they're all suddenly really serious about it. And, and now they're pointing at each other like the admiral, yeah. admirals are bringing it forward. They've been seeing it for years. Like, where was this in the 90s? In the 90s, it was taboo to even mention it. Yeah, that was that was the beginning of the cancel culture in my mm -hmm. book. You'd bring that up. If he was a pilot, 
for you know like an airline pilot or you know military the documentaries were at 7 p.m at night on abc on sunday yeah. like they, told, they told me i didn't see anything they wadded it up and what happened to my report yeah it was the same story every time yep yeah, they would go. They would go way out of their way to make sure that you either keep your mouth shut or they would just make you look stupid, make you look Dude, like you're crazy. And, that newest uh, Air Force guy that saw the the I can't think it was the the gimbal guy, not David Fravor, but the other one. He was saying how he told his admiral about it, and the admiral acted annoyed. It's like we're still uh, doing this. Yeah, <laughs> I can't think. Everybody. everybody who wa- who's watching this whenever I air it, it's like, oh, I know him. I, I say this, I bring it up a lot. I can't remember his name. But... <laughs> Are you talking Ad- about the, the guy that they basically pushed out to the media and said, here, just tell them this? No, no, uh, not that guy. Not that guy. Yeah. Not the, you're thinking about the heavy set guy with the goatee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, not him. This was a, uh, I can look, I can look it up. But yeah, he was a, uh, he was in, <laughs> We discussed him not too long. What do you think about that? He was, uh, some of my people think he's full of crap. Yeah, I just, I really, everything that they do on television usually is just, uh, they're, Ryan Graves. it's like they want it. It's like they want it. What is it? Ryan Graves. Okay. To make sure it's not the same guy. I'm not just talking smack here. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're, they, they have to tell the, tell us what they're doing, whether they, do it through fiction or comedy or it's like they believe in karma. Like they have to tell us. And if they, if we don't catch it and we don't do anything about it, then their karmatic plate is cleaned off and they're not going to be held accountable. Yeah. This dude right here. He was talking about how he told his admiral. About okay. It. Yes. Yes. And uh, his admiral like more annoyed than he acted annoyed and just walked off like another one. You're still doing this. <laughs> it's funny. He was on Lex Freeman. Anytime you get a Joe Rogan guest that's interesting, find him on Lex Freeman and you get the real story. It was Lex 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 kind of like lulls them to sleep. They they start spilling the beans. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We're, you're talking a while ago about the um, Bigfoots with the high strangeness and the poltergeist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the subject, well, the subject uh, of that book. I was going to say what happened to him if, if he didn't know about it. He came home one day and his uh, locked his keys out of his house. He didn't have his keys. Had to break into his own house. Gets in there. Something's eating his ice cream sandwiches. Oh. And moved the sticks to the other side of the table. Ice cream sandwiches are melted on one side. <sighs> and also, whatever it was, had uh, used the bathroom all over his bed. Oh, it, my goodness. It was, but his door... <laughs> his. His whole thing was his doors were in Sheboygan or wherever. He's up in Minnesota. All the towns sound like that. Like Bemidji. I think yeah, his, his uh, keys were in Bemidji. He had to break into his own house and that stuff had happened while he was gone. But he never had any negative things happen other than that. Or he's had a couple instances of sleep paralysis, I believe. Where he thought something was outside his bedroom door. He couldn't get up. Yep. Yeah. That's it's a telltale it's- sign. They will, it's like they latch on from the attention and then you just bring them right into your house. In the, in the land just north of him, seeing the dog man, they've been seeing the little people. Sounds crazy just saying it out my mouth like that, but that's, uh, oh, I know. It seems like, it seems like there's a, I'm, I'm, I'm over here. I'll, I'll say this. I'm, if it's real, it seems like there's a correlation between all of it. If it's not, it's just horse, but it's bull crap. But if it's, if it's real, there's a correlation. It just it doesn't surprise me from what I've seen myself. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't I can't disregard because I did before I had my experiences. You've said a lot of the same stuff that I've heard people say in the last six months. And yeah. they've said a lot of the same stuff you've said and so on and so on. And even I had the I don't know if you've heard of Long Island Bigfoot. He gets out there in the woods of Long Island. It's kind of like a kind of like a more wooded suburban area. I'm yeah. sure you've heard of Long Island. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. But apparently there's woods out there. I didn't know. I thought New York was all bodegas and pizza places. Yeah. But, yeah, go figure. And, hey, I'm walking here. But <laughs> he, 
he he didn't have he didn't have any kind of um, <coughs> paranormal pro. He didn't have any experiences, but now he talks to Bigfoot, and he has a couple cool stories. But he had a traumatic brain injury. He was hit with a bomb in the uh, Middle East. I can't remember if it was Iraq or Afghanistan. Comes back, Bigfoot of plenty. Sees ghosts. Oh, wow! Like it, almost like a switch flipped. Wow! And see, it was the opposite for me because I had the meningitis, and that stopped my out of body experiences. Yeah, it made it weird. It, it's weird how that happens. Meningitis like eat, in the nerves and stuff. Yeah, it was a. I I had received a a little bit of brain damage from it. It's like a pneumonia, but it's in the brain. Just bad. Get bit by a mosquito. No, I I honestly think it was from a, a vaccination that they were hmm. given out at that time in 1988 is when it happened. There was a certain vaccination that was causing meningitis at that time. Well, which one was it? I can't. I have to go back and look at the uh, the uh, video I was watching it on. Yo, because my uncle got meningitis in 92. Yeah, it could have been. In 91. Yeah, it could have been. I don't know how old you are. But he I'm, he's about I'm 40, sixty. I'm forty seven. Okay, he, yeah, he's about sixty. Yeah. If, if he ain't sixty, he's fifty nine. But yeah, I remember I was in third grade at the time, ninety one or ninety, right around the time of the Gulf War, the first one, and he was in the hospital for six months or more, just comatose. Yeah, meningitis. I know. Well, it'll mess you up. You don't catch it. My eyes, they went cross. Mm-hmm. They, I just had flu symptoms. And so they just kept treating it like it was the flu. So they told him when, it was viral meningitis. Is that the same thing? Uh, well, did they have to? Well, mine wasn't contagious, so it was. And he wasn't quarantined or anything. He was. Yeah, uh, it was viral. Yeah. He was with uh, my the family. Got to go in and see him. I never did see him until he woke up. I got yeah. more. He, he, I don't think he ever was coma coma, but he was in such a bad shape that I couldn't go in there. Yeah, I was probably right right next to going comatose. Mm-hmm. They, he had to wear said, an eye patch for a while. Yeah, it'll mess you up, that's for sure. But I didn't have any trouble after that. But it was well, probably a couple years after that was when I had the recall, the abuse. And then I got into drugs and alcohol real bad. And I think that probably didn't help matters no. <laughs> at all and so your sensitivity um, just ended with that um disease then yeah pretty much interesting and then somewhere down the line it just picked back up and it was the house that uh that apartment where i had the the sleep paralysis come to find out somebody had blew their brains out in that place right before wow and so i don't know if that mixed with i don't know <laughs> it just talk about negative something energy. triggered it yeah because they love they love death they love that lower vibration and that's for some reason they hang around just like uh people that go and exercise houses they have to exercise a house just like a person mm-hmm. or perform deliverance and yeah, another case, uh, Bobo. There's a case. The guy's name is Bo, or not Bobo. Um, oh, what is it? Now I can't think of it. It was an Australian guy that got kidnapped by a yowie and was kept. Mm-hmm. I don't. I heard. I've long. heard that story. Like rumblings of it. Oh, what is his name? Now I can't think of it. <laughs> I met. Uh, my co-host Lee Arne, which actually it's her birthday today. Happy birthday, Lee! <laughs> oh yeah, she just friended me on Facebook today. Yes, um, I've been talking to her about about coming on. I didn't realize y'all were affiliated. In who you sent me that video? Yeah, we all worked on uh, CE4 research. That's where I met uh, Mick and Lee, and I started sending her times to do interviews, and I realized she's not in this content. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't know when her time is. Uh, they are about 15 hours ahead of us. Yeah. So it's actually the eighth for them right now. But uh, yeah, they both had experiences. They're both experiencers. Mick has had Yowie experiences and um, UFO alien experiences. Or 
if you want to call them that. Everybody's got their own definition. I definitely like to have her on. It was just when she told me that time, I was like, that's going to be a problem. I may have to find a day I can telework. Yeah, because <laughs> like if it was right now, well, actually, right now is perfect time for for her. Well, you know what? I've had somebody on here from New Zealand before. I just did it in the afternoon. Yeah, and it's, that's time. pretty much the same time too. They're they're right there. So I just remember yeah, they're she, like they're good. They're really good people. I've been close with them since I met them. I mean, uh, she seems she cool. Gets, she's got her own. Uh, website called new to christ mm -hmm. uh new the number two and christ.com.au um she gives counseling uh deliverance ministry not well it's not a deliverance ministry but she will help with deliverance um or anybody coming out of the new age that's being demonically attacked spiritually attacked um she hit me with the same disclaimer you did. Yeah. <laughs> about what you talk about. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because you, you said that before you sent me the video, and I'm like, ah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because some people want to want to like politics. They want to keep religion out of it. But oh, it part is, of it, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it, totally. Whatever's going on and whatever's going on on the other side, the religion's part of it. Yeah. Well, whether, and whether plus, we know exactly how it's going or not, that's yeah. Whether, entities all know each other. Yeah, and the fact that why, like I said, why would an alien come all this way just to freak out? And they put down their stories of people that they're teaching them a new age doctrine, like they're putting down Jesus without the the abductee even bringing Jesus up. Like the person, they won't say. They won't just talk about him like uh, in passing. They'll say it in a way like the person you call the Jesus Christ. So it's not them saying it like it. They're saying it mm -hmm. in, on your behalf almost because they can't say his name. And almost so like code. Yeah, it's it's almost like I said that spiritual red tape. Like they have to do certain things a certain way. Because they literally cannot even utter his name on their own account because it's it's like uh there's this other thing on um oh what was it called? Uh End Times Production does it. Mm -hmm. He has an interview with this guy. Now I can't think of it. The Foss Brothers. Higher Entities, that's the name of the show, the Foss Brothers. I remember seeing End Times Production doing an interview with those guys, and they're talking about this general, or not a general, he's just a, a guy in the military, but he's going to this dumb, and he has to sign this like affidavit or something, this clause, that he will not say the name Jesus Christ when he gets down here to see these. They're calling them aliens, but he's like, why do I have to sign this he not even to cuss not even if you stub your toe you can't you can't say the the words jesus christ when you get down here because it would have bounced them out i guess it's probably it's what i think it's like accidental discharge yeah you will <laughs> say it and you'll viral. you'll literally cast them out of there like <laughs> casting out a demon or it's discomforting wow. to them yeah i mean and that's coming from I don't, I'm not sure how uh, sourced that is. The guy's claiming that he interviewed him himself. And yeah, that's, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> if it's true. Big, big, what do they say? Big if true. Um, like Phil Schneider, he talks about it. The guy that imagine was. If, if, if that does have any kind of adverse effect, to just say it would be. Cause some, well, some kind of ripple. There's there's uh, stories I've I've read about people causing someone that they thought like this person's possessed. They've got a demon, and just under their breath, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. And that demon would manifest within that person and start making them flip out right then and there, just because they rebuked them, and then. Yeah, it's just 
they do not like that name. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I've heard you know, those exorcism stories are terrifying. Like the one about, like I told you earlier about knowing a cop wasn't baptized, but there was one I heard growing up from someone who I think is pretty reliable that said uh, someone that was possessed, a little girl, I believe her neck stretched across the room and bit a nun on the, on the neck or on the yes. cheek or something. Yes. I don't know if that's like a old wives tale about that, but the person I heard it from would not just feel, wouldn't blow smoke up my, my wouldn't lie to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm smoke up my skirt. Yeah, they can they can manipulate all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. They they it's probably do... like a kindergarten level stuff for them. Yeah. Well, like uh the ring of Solomon. Okay, have you heard of the mm -hmm. ring, the story of the ring of Solomon? He received a ring from God. It had God's name inscribed inside of it and because of that, it gave him the power to control demons. And he used that power to help build the first temple of God. Well, you go to Moses and Aaron, fast forward to the Exodus, and he goes, Moses and Aaron go in front of the Pharaoh and challenge them to a magician battle or whatever between mm -hmm. the power of God and. Definitely heard that one. So they obviously the Pharaoh and his magicians are in direct contact with the demonic to be able to match, you know, they're throwing down staffs and they're turning into snakes. That's that's mm -hmm. they they're in contact with the fallen angels and demons. So that tells me that they also use the same ability. They might not have had the ring of Solomon, but they were probably sacrificing people in order to gain power to build their pyramids and all these monoliths. That's why they all look similar, like the Mayan pyramid or yeah, the Mayan pyramids mm -hmm. and the Aztec, all these huge monoliths are a bow back. Like how are they moving? We can't move them today with the machinery. Well, that's because we're not using demons to, <laughs> to move our stuff around. Yeah, don't give them a chance. They'll do it. Yeah, I'm sure they're they're giving our government all kinds of information. I just wonder if it's possible that. that maybe there's there's demons and there's aliens, and they all use the same, lack of a better word, technology. Right. But like well, one you, one has ill intent, and the other one doesn't. You've got the anti diluvian theory, mm -hmm. where there's this technology that was created from the offspring of the fallen angel, the Nephilim, the giants, and they were creating all kinds of stuff. And supposedly our government has found that that's what uh, they're finding in Antarctica and stuff like that. It's that was be my next question. How long did the government finds it? Yeah. But apparently that's that 50 year rule uh, we've always heard and the government, what the government shows you they have 50 years more. Yeah. Yeah. That's the I only reason they're possible. showing us because they're not using it anymore. And it's yeah, become... they don't have to worry about anybody, any of the adversaries getting it anymore. Yeah. I think that's the reason we haven't gone to war, like in the catastrophic sense since then, since World War II. Yeah. Because it wouldn't make any difference. Now, if we went to war, everybody's pretty much playing for the same team. Yeah. As far as the elite, that, the elite lizard people go. That too. Well, and I think it's... What if it does become a war of attrition? The next step is the nuclear aspect. Yeah, and that that's just going to be in total annihilation. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think that can happen. It only happened once. Well, hopefully, something will stop it from happening. And that's another thing they those sightings that people see they they like to mess with the nuclear. Warheads, yeah, lots of defusing, <laughs> lots of defusing of the nuclear warheads. Yeah, or well, they'll the UFOs will show up over a an area base. They'll get it all started, and then they'll shut them down. They'll like prep them for takeoff. They'll get it to what is it? It's like five or six stages or something mm -hmm. like that. And they'll get it to so many stages, and then they'll turn it off. It's like they're testing it. 
to see if they can do it or they're showing us that they can. It's weird. I really hope we can turn the corner here pretty soon. Probably not in my lifetime. I just don't want to die of radiation poison. But no. maybe like maybe uh, out. yeah, no. <laughs> maybe society will take a turn. I think once I oh crap, we've been doing this an hour. Yeah, we'll wrap up soon. But I I just think we're uh kind of adolescents when it comes to our social media usage. Yeah. I think that's I think that's easily seventy percent of our problem as a world right now is social media. Yes, it is. Like it went from nobody knew anybody to everybody knows everybody, and they want to strangle them. Yeah. And I think once that, I think that's once we solve that initial, you know, the honeymoon phase of social media, like we're in now, we don't know how to use it. We basically got nuclear weapons now. Yeah. Social media is nuclear weapon of society, but I think once we figure that out, and maybe the neural link is the way to do it because it, you trust everybody. But I don't really want to do that, go that route either. Yeah, that, that's, everybody knows what everybody's thinking ever. Yeah, the hive mind. Seems to be the next step because aliens do it. Yeah. From every person I've talked to, aliens have that tel- telep- te- tel- telepathy. I yeah. can't say that word, telepathy. <laughs> telepathic I mean, it seems like every entity down to the down to the 10-foot monkey in Minnesota that can unscrew a peanut butter jar has that ability. So it seems yeah. like the next step. Maybe yeah. they maybe they evolved it before we did, or and that's why they were trusted with it. But either well, way, they've got it. Elon just announced that they're getting ready to move into the human trials for the yeah. Neuralink. He was showing all those videos of the monkeys doing the tasks with their and he they did a good job. I mean, as far as not being able to tell that it was there, but it's still it's just creepy. I don't think I'm taking the neural link. That may be my old man stubborn move there. The only thing I heard that he said that made sense, my Elon Musk, is uh, it's gotten to the point where if you leave your phone behind and you leave your house and drive to the store and you don't have your phone, it's like missing limb syndrome. It literally is. And it's gotten to that point. It's like Sadly, another, I believe it. Yeah, it's like you pat your pockets and you're like, it's like you lost your arm or something. I wish oh I didn't. Goodness. I wish I didn't like my phone like I did. Oh, I know. Or if you if your service goes down for a few days, you really mm. know how addicted you are. I mean, it, it really lets you know. <laughs> I had a horrible problem with it because I say problem. It's it probably is a problem, but I was um I was an only child, so I'm always really bored bored easy so when the phone came along it's like i had another it's like i had somebody to play with yeah and so i don't i mean i was like this is amazing i was older than most of the kids when iphones came out i was like 25 26 and so i was like hell yeah i want an iphone i can, <laughs> I can do everything because used to you have to have a laptop to do most of that like i can i can get on the internet in the bathroom i'm in never yeah. be bored again and that's what happened i feel like i'm like halfway a crackhead about it a lot of yeah. days. Yeah, they were just putting implementing computers when I was getting through school. Mm-hmm. I graduated in '93, so I mean, it was just starting right there. My I first computer was. Now. Oh, I know. It's it's probably just it's overload. <laughs> Every it's kid just, gets a laptop. Yeah, it's insane. My kids have two laptops in this room behind me that yeah. don't even work half the time that are more powerful than any computer I ever owned until I was like 20. Yeah. Like you just have that and sitting here against the wall. <laughs> yeah. It's nothing like when I was a kid, <laughs> I had the Atari or the, oh, yeah. uh, Activision. I remember the, the Nintendo Activ- switch now. Yeah. Play Fortnite. They play Fortnite. My kid goes to, uh, my oldest one goes to, Martial arts, they come home and all the kids jump on Fortnite when they get home to fight some more. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you haven't killed each other enough. They do jujitsu, so they practice murdering. Oh, they love teaching that competition. Mm-hmm. They like they love that inst- installation of the competition. It's good. Keeps you uh, from being insecure. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, we've been going for an hour and ten minutes, and I have on good authority there's barbecue in the kitchen. <laughs> and so <laughs> this has been an amazing episode it's always 
it always shocks me how good some of these people are, especially somebody with a passion like yours. Yes. And I, I, would, li- I would like to have you back on and talk about the, uh, the firmament again. We didn't get a chance to get into that. And it is a weeknight, so we just won't. But, uh, yeah, thanks for being on, man. It was a good episode. Yeah, thanks for having me. You got you got any uh, anything you want to hawk? Anything, anything you want to put in the description? Uh, just the uh, website for Lee and uh, possibly, what was that website? I'll put it in there. Uh, new the number two and then Christ dot com dot au dot au. Okay. All right, yeah, I'll put then, it in the description. Yeah. All right. And um, then, Possibly my uh, okay. uh, demonic alien deception twenty four. That's my YouTube station. Oh, that's your YouTube station. I saw that. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know whose it was. Yeah, subscribe to those. They'll be in the description. Yeah, I'll put them when I post the thing. I'll too. I'll put it on there too for you to for them to okay. see. All right, we have a good time. All right, man. Well, uh, stay stay warm up there in the frozen tundra. Yes. <laughs> watch out for the watch out for the corn. Oh yeah, there is more than corn in Indiana. <laughs> All right.